wind vertices, aka tornadoes, have an upward force, while whirlpools have a downward force that drills into the bedrock. This is why potholes are found in rivers all over the world. And also along the coast. The size of the pothole shows the size of the vortex that shaped it. They can be found in clusters that can commonly link together to form lines. and can even form long snaking paths like a meandering river. They are accompanied by remarkable river channels. So, does this mean that cenotes are massive potholes? Only some of them, the large, shallower ones are. Now, there is a great geologic mystery for why is there a ring of cenotes on the Yucatan Peninsula? Some suggest that they are sinkholes from the Chicxulub impact. However, impacts and sinkholes are not known to be correlated. But we do know that potholes tend to form in paths. And this is a very distinct arcing path. A similar formation can be found in Argentina, even complete with accretion ridges. Near the Dead Sea are supposed sinkholes but they form a clear path as well and run parallel to the Dead Sea. In England, layers of potholes appear on terraced landscapes. These formations show where paths of swirling water currents carved potholes into the flat surface of the terrace. This is the most clear evidence in the world that terraced landscapes were made quickly by water and not slowly by ice. Similarly, when ocean currents ran along the curved Yucatan sea cliff, it made an arcing path of swirling water currents that carved these paths of potholes, called cenotes. This curved coastline is thought to be part of the impact crater from the meteorite that took out the dinosaurs. But this is actually not an impact crater at all. Rather, it's a volcanic pipe, just like the Eye of the Sahara, and many other false impact sites found around the world. A volcanic pipe is an igneous intrusion which can bring up rocks, such as granite, kimberlite, and lamprite. There can also be pipes of uplifted sandstone. And even salt intrusions, such as Upheaval Dome, Utah. These layers represent undisturbed sedimentary strata. As an intrusion pushes up on them, it deforms them. Then ocean currents plant it flat into a terrace, and thus leaving these cross-sections of many deformed layers. In Africa, we see clear indications of sheet water flow. 
And this false impact site is right next to volcanoes that haven't been plain flat to expose their cross-sectional layers. At the center of these expanding layers is the volcanic plug, which can be a dome at the center of the structure. Sometimes the plug subducts slightly to leave an indentation that looks like a bowl-shaped crater. These are the features of volcanic pipes, and they are actually a very common feature on Earth's surface. The Chicxulub crater has a very pronounced central plug and has four deformed layers in close proximity. Now, it is possible to find a double ring impact crater, but the central crater is always deeper than the outer. But this is not the case for the Chicxulub crater. There is also a rock feature connected to the plug that the impact would have obliterated. The Earth's list of large impact craters are, in fact, full of geologic uplift features. That is why these features are correlated with fault lines where buckling and uplift forces are evident. The Earth has only a small amount of real impact craters that are larger than a half mile. And some are hard to distinguish between shallow volcanic craters and real impact craters. Most impact craters are only a few hundred feet in diameter. Now, if sheet water flow is in fact responsible for planing the terrain around volcanic pipes, then you would also expect to find circular ruts around volcanic intrusions. This is also found as predicted. 